Good morning, everybody. I think that we are live now. I never really know when uh, the live is live. But uh, anyway, good morning, everybody. This is Kent Davis reporting to you from the playroom in El Congrejo. Um, we've got some serious homework time going on where I normally work. So anyway, here I am. And here you guys are. Appreciate, as always, everybody joining us. I'm Kent Davis, Managing Director of Panama Equity Real Estate. Been here in Panama for 13 years and uh, been checking in with you guys during the pandemic once a week, every Friday at 11 a.m. So here we are. Happy to answer your questions. In the meantime, let me give you a quick rundown on what's cooking in Panama. Hold on. I got to get all my windows set up here so I can refer to a couple of notes I've got. All right. Stand by. All right. There we go. So what's new in Panama this week and what's new in Panama real estate this week? Well, this is the first week that we were allowed to go out from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. That was good, but it looks like it's not going to be continued. Um, they're starting the full quarantine just on Sundays, starting again this week. So come Saturday at 5 p.m., you need to be at home and not on the street until Monday morning at 5 a.m. It is what it is. Uh, I think that rate of transmission is still manageable, but not perfect. Panamanian government has continued to deal with this very aggressively with some strong leadership and national unity, although people are starting to get a little frustrated to get back to work. But over here at Panama Equity, we never stopped working, as you guys all know. So what else? The international airport remains closed until June 22nd, or further notice, countries like Colombia and Argentina are actually have announced being closed until September. I don't think that's going to be the case in Panama, but let's see right now. What we're being told again is June 22nd for all of our borders to get reopened. Copa start flying again at around 10% capacity. We talked about that last week. Um, as always, appreciate if you guys, you know, Check in, let me know who's there, what you're watching. Uh, we've been averaging, golly, a couple hundred views over the weeks, uh, or I should say per session. I think last week we had some uh, technical difficulties, but in total about a thousand people saw the video between today and last week, which is good. That means there's still quite a bit of interest for Panama real estate. And that's one of the topics I wanted to cover today. You know, as a good salesman, I try to keep my eye on all these Facebook groups, expats in Panama, tropical cowboys. There, there's about 10 different groups that, you know, the Pedicee Post, uh, 10 different groups that are very much geared to expats. And I tell you what, every single day, there's at least a couple families checking in saying, hey, we're in California. Hey, we're in Canada. Hey, we're in Europe. And we're looking to move. And regardless of what's going to happen with real estate prices on the supply side and on the rental side, I can tell you demand is still very much there. This last week, we on average uh, are averaging about I think from 25 to uh, let's call it 50 property inquiries. Let me tell you what we got this past week. It's always interesting. I usually check these on Mondays, not Fridays. 20, 40, 57, 67. Yeah, about 70 people inquired on listings we have. So as a seller, you appreciate that. And as a buyer, well, I mean, hey, keep your eye on the market. And uh, if it makes sense, jump on it. Speaking of jumping on it, we submitted far as I know, I haven't talked to the whole team today on their pipeline, but we submitted three offers of which two of the three were accepted. Uh, Balboa Avenue, that new offer looks like it's going to be closing that one from last week at around, well, I don't want to jinx it, but uh, around, around 1800 a square meter. 
Balboa Avenue, 10-year-old property. So that's just one data point. But as you all know, data points in Panama are hard to come across because while our MLS is good, it's not all inclusive. It's not fully comprehensive where every single transaction gets registered on the MLS. So yeah, um, in short, things are busy. What's going to happen with the real estate market? Well, this was our first week of actually getting back and being able to physically show properties. And every single one of my agents was out showing properties. Our leasing agent closed two deals. She's got a couple more in the pipeline. One of our leasing agents, another leasing agent showing constantly a couple of our properties. Uh, she is, uh, Ismaili is more focused on properties from say $600 a month to $1,000 a month, which is more sort of local middle income, uh, uh, sort of lower price point than say our executive rentals, which start at around a thousand dollars a month, gets you a fully furnished place right on the water, Balboa Avenue, you know, pool, gym, etc. So, so that's an update for you is, is rental activity is there. And when there's activity, then prices hold up. Now, one week does not determine a market, uh, but the last two and a half months, I don't think anybody's expectations were such that they're going to start lowering their prices because of what happened two months ago or what had happened in the last two months where they will start lowering their prices if, you know, they don't have any inquiries or if they have their own situations, as we've talked about in past Facebook lives, where they're going to need to drop their price. So let's see. I'm always keen on answering any questions you have, understanding where folks are checking in from. Uh, just transition from a hour and a half sales meeting where we are going to be launching a really, really cool new product. I can't wait to tell you guys about it. Can't tell you about it yet, but uh, keep watching this space. Hopefully by next week, I'll be able to make the big announcement. If you're not subscribed to our newsletter, make sure you do by visiting panamequity.com and just hit subscribe. We've got a database of almost over 20,000 people now that... Uh, Appreciate what we put out because, um, yeah, we, we try to keep it real over here at Panama Equity. I like answering questions in case you have any. In the meantime, let's see other notes. Um, yeah, I mean, closing showings. Hey, Matthew Marks, long time no see. Matthew's one of our city agents, been with us for, what is it, Matthew? Probably about eight months, been in Panama for 11 years. Matthew is now an expert in Panama properties. He, he already knew quite a bit to be dangerous before he started with us, but now he is rocking. Matthew's got a couple of those deals that I mentioned earlier coming along. So guys, in case you don't have any questions, really this week, I didn't want to do a big one because last week took quite some time. Happy to answer questions, but uh, if I don't have any questions, I will probably be checking out. Um, yeah, thank you also to Chris for checking in from Panama City. Chris, do you have any questions? Happy to answer them. Thank Tasco. Yes. All right. You know, one of the things, guys, uh, I think that's important on the real estate side is demand. And we've been getting quite some inquiries from people from all over the world, particularly the United States who are getting frustrated and getting concerned with what's going on, whether that's COVID, whether that's, you know, uh, the protests and Hey, uh, on behalf of Panama equity and ownership, uh, we fully support whatever needs to get done to make some major institutional changes in the United States. And that's all I'll say to that. But uh, if you follow me on my personal Facebook, I'm a bit more vocal. Uh, politics and religion, as a real estate guy, I always try to uh, steer clear from. But the point is, guys, is there's a lot of people from around the world, including the United States, who are questioning what's going on in the United States right now, or more importantly, questioning what's been going on in the United States for a long time now and saying, you know what? The grass might be a little bit greener in another country. And as someone who this is going to get very personal very quickly, but as somebody who has, uh, who is married to someone of color, I can tell you that, and I'm pretty vocal about this, that that is one of my favorite things about Panama is 
that we don't have inherently uh, a neither a history or a sensitivity to race on any side of the spectrum. Black, white, yellow, green, purple. Panamanians are all spectrums. And that's actually one of the things that I like the most about this country is there's no sort of racial history or racial charge. Uh, and that is quite a relief from what I'm seeing. And it breaks my heart and actually in a way makes me happy. Two sides of the two very tricky sides to the equation of what's going on in the United States right now. But point being is it's going to be good for business for Panama. And it already has been, which is awesome from people from all over the world. What questions can I answer, guys? We've got kind of a uh, not a whole lot of people on the Facebook Live this week. We always get questions after the fact, and I'm happy to answer questions via email, via chat, whatever. But um, yeah, any oh, there are some questions. I haven't scrolled down yet. See any pricing adjustments in the market? Um, starting to not so much market related as individual seller related. We definitely have some large families that are maintaining retail and hotel operations that are a little bit cash poor right now. So, you know, I think um, we've definitely got some opportunities. We've got a place in El Cangrejo uh, from a large Panamanian owner who bought several that needs to burn out one or two. Uh, one of them's already rented, which is always fun as an owner to be able to slide into a turnkey situation. Um, okay. Yeah. So that answers the first question. Uh, would love to hear about the executive rental market. Can you tell me what building has a lot of supply and high quality construction? So on the supply side, Chris, interesting you ask about that. If we're talking about individual buildings, who's got a lot of vacancy? I think Costa Leste definitely has a lot of vacancy right now. And I think they're likely to see some of the, and have already seen some of the strongest corrections in, um, in rental prices before COVID and now even more so after COVID. I mean, I was told by someone in the Japanese community that over 1500 Japanese executives have left Panama to ride out COVID and then will be coming back. Now, did they maintain their leases? Have they talked to their owners about their leases? I don't know on an individual basis, but I wouldn't be surprised if some of them just said, you know what, I'll figure it out when I get back. So you've got some of that supply going on off online and you've got some of that demand disappearing temporarily. So Costa del Este in particular has been hard hit because that is where the corporate centers are. And that's where we've seen some of a corporate exodus. And it's not permanent. It's more, hey, I'm going to go to where grandma and family are to ride this out. Although a lot of people have decided that uh, they're going to ride this out in Panama versus United States versus Europe versus Canada. Um, yeah. What am I seeing more of rental or sales customer? You know, Ruben, I think we're seeing as a agency we're seeing rental customers are translating into deals faster because they're here so rental closings have been in higher higher they just been happening more we've had more rental transactions in the last two weeks than we have sales transactions however we are seeing again a lot of demand on the buy side of people who just are ready to get here so that's exciting um curfew update from last night matthew thank you so curfew is going back in effect for one full day which is sunday so curfew starts 5 p.m saturday curfew ends 5 a.m monday that's the story there um let's see we're 14 minutes into this any other questions happy to answer them otherwise guys we do this every week and Generally, I try to show up prepared, but my last meeting lasted for two hours. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to compile all the questions that we get during the week to try to answer them publicly. But uh, hopefully that's given you a bit of a sense of supply and demand, which essentially makes up a real estate market. Um, okay, deal hunters. No, we definitely, Chris, your question. Uh, how do we feel about deal hunters who want to find a really good deal? Are they time wasters in the current market or do you cater to them too? 
we absolutely cater to them. Now, in a hot market, we might say, you know what? We don't have time for guys that just want to pay pennies on the dollar. Right now, while we're busy, we still want to be able to accommodate investors who, you know, we've got a couple hot deals. Um, hot deals are still somewhat elusive right now, but we'll stick with you. The key whenever you're investing in real estate, if you want an exceptional deal is obviously you're going to be patient, but you also need to know when to jump on the right deal. And that's a function of understanding market dynamics, understanding pricing, understanding the specific building or area you're, list, you're interested in, and then recognizing when you are presented a deal saying, all right, cool. Yeah, no, that does totally make sense. Where we're seeing some challenges is yield compression. So, you know, rents have definitely started to come down because enough tenants approached their owners and said, look, you know, I'm either traveling for the next three months to ride out COVID. Can you give me a break? Or I lost my job or my job. I'm an independent contractor and I'm billing 30% less. So you, can you help me out with the rent? So you can, I think pretty much plan on rents coming down unless we get this massive amount of people. Once our airports open up, which we might, you never know a uh, massive amount of people coming in uh, to look for rentals. And that's, Different from a place like New York, different from a market like Washington, D.C., different from a place like London. Guys, Panama is tiny, tiny. This whole country is only four and a half million. This whole city, if you don't count Chorrera, Narayhan, is less than a million. And the area that we deal with, which is, you know, city center, Babo Avenue, at any one time, maybe you got, I don't know, 6,000, 5,000 units available above a thousand dollars, less than $3,000 for rent. Let's call it furnished. When I first moved to Panama 13 years ago was with Proc was when Procter and Gamble was just starting to relocate 1500 families from their Venezuela, Canada, and in some cases, United States operation, they converged, right? So you got 1,500 families all kind of looking for about the same thing, which is like a nice one or two bedroom, fully furnished in a good building with amenities that's less than 10 minutes from work. That single business changed the market. You don't have that in other markets. You don't have that in a, you know, Austin, Texas, where you've got 500 tech companies. Another tech company moves or a tech company leaves unless it's like Tesla or Amazon, <laughs> um, you know, that, that that's not going to affect the market. Whereas Panama, it will. So that's actually kind of cool and optimistic in the sense of, hey, companies, one Tesla, one Amazon, one more Procter & Gamble, one Chinese outfit that brings 50 employees moves the market. So yeah. Are owners open to rent to own or owner financing? Absolutely. Absolutely, Matthew. You know, we've got some great developers who are doing owner financing, sometimes better than the banks, sometimes as low as 4%, you know, 50 to 60% down or even less, 20 to 30% down in some cases. So, you know, if you don't have 150, $200,000 to buy a property, yes, we've got owner financing both from private sellers and developers all day long. So yeah, no, thank you. Um, as someone looking to move to Panama, what should be expected in terms of social circles, finding good friends, networking, et cetera. Another thing I love about this country is like minds. You get people from all over the world doing all kinds of different things moving out here. You know, you've got Canadians and Europeans who can live anywhere in the world, but decide on Panama for maybe they like the climate because it never snows. Maybe they like the fact that it's very safe because they have young kids. Maybe the fact that they like territorial tax system, which is as the Panamanian government, we don't care where you work. We don't care where you get your money from. We're not going to tax your income. Americans, well, you know, we're a little bit different. We don't have that opportunity. Although as an American, you can still get foreign earned tax income tax credit of Last I checked, it was 102 grand. So yeah, and that was last year. So that's also really interesting. In that case, as an American, you have to spend, I think it's, you know, 50 or 48 weeks outside of the country. So I can't go back and stay in the US for 
a full month and be able to take advantage of that. But Chris, the point is that people move to Panama for different reasons, uh, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, taxes is one of them for sure. Territorial tax system, which means no income tax. The weather is great. The safety is great. And man, you get all kinds. Um, I believe you are a member of the Panama Business Club, which I started about a year and a half ago. We were averaging about 50 people per per session, per, per event. We were doing that every two weeks. Not sure how post COVID, you know, social distance, face mask, all that icebreaker <laughs> um, stuff, which you got to do as soon as meetings start coming up. But yeah, that the cross section there were lawyers, doctors, independent professionals, people that are uh, urban, um, what's the word, not urban, uh, digital nomads, programmers, coders, traders, you get all kinds here. Um, sweet spot in terms of picking up investment properties in the city. If somebody wants to pick up a few single family units, what would they expect to pay? Good question. Thank you. So, you know, I mean, the short answer is it depends on what you're looking for. But to generalize, I would say anywhere from between 150 and 300,000, you're going to get the best returns until you get to, say, a million and up, which is where you can start buying full buildings with, you know, five, six, 10 apartments in there. That's when things get really interesting in terms of returns. The question that I still can't answer is what will rents be like in a month? And again, you've got the whole like, A, people are losing their jobs. People are, you know, uh, negotiating with their current landlords because their business is slow. And then you got the Procter & Gamble effect, which is a lot of people are leaving different countries um, to get the hell out of where they live because they know that Panama is a lot more safe, a lot more secure, a lot more stable than where they might be moving from. So, uh, Chris, 150 to 300,000, we've got developer financing, in some cases, owner financing. And then you've got something that I'm going to be talking about to people next week. I don't want to ruin the surprise, so I'm not even going to say it. But yeah, right now it's about 150 to 300,000. And then your costs on something like that are going to be okay. Well, I buy an apartment for 200,000, you know, I'll probably be able to rent it for anywhere from 900 to $1,200 a month. And then you've got homeowners association fees, which will be on something like that, anywhere from 100 to $150 a month. So there's take that off the top. And then you've got property management, which is about 10% of uh, gross monthly rent. So if you're renting it for between 900 and 1200, that's $90 to $120 a month. If it's newer building, you're not going to have as much maintenance. If you're an older building figure, you know, uh, less than 1% gross a year. So, you know, you're grossing 12 grand. You're not going to be spending $1,200 um, as 10%. Uh, you're not going to be spending. Yeah, you, you probably spend about $120. A, a, a year at least on that. So more like 3% to 4% gross, but that's gross per year. Um, yeah, or gross per month, you know, thousand bucks, it adds up, our bucks. Um, again, that's 10%. Yeah, 10%, man, 10%. That's what we've got in our, um, our pro formas. Any other questions? 25 minutes. Don't, I hate talking paragraphs, guys, but I'm the only one here. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I'm not. We've got, uh, we always get people on these every Friday at 11 a.m. So love to hear where you're checking in from. Um, man, Chris, you're firing it off. Pre construction opportunity in Panama right now. Well, um, there are a couple, depends on what you're looking for. You know, if you want something that's going to be almost ready now, we've got a couple projects that we pitch, I'll direct message you. If you're looking for something that's going to be ready over the next couple of years, I've got a project in Casco Viejo. That's awesome. Entry level figure around a hundred thousand, 10% down now, 20% over the next six months. Um, the Chinese project is going to be starting up literally like as soon as COVID's over, or maybe a couple of weeks after that, you can find that on our website. So really it depends on what you're looking for, if you're going to move into but there are a few developers that are offering developer financing, as we talked about earlier, and also some developers that are kind of hurt. Like Santa Maria, if you want to buy for pennies on the dollar, what they were spending selling for 3500 a meter, I mean, I think 
you know, if you're looking to buy one or two and that's five, 600,000 entry point, you know, I, I think around 1600 to 2000 a meter pre-construction is, is not unlikely. We've, we've seen that actually. So yeah, I mean, there are some developers that are like, you know, we just need to get a couple sales right now because we haven't had any in the last three months and we continue to pay our developer, our, our, our project finance bill. Deals are happening, Matthew Marks, in this environment, for sure, across the country. Petisi deals are happening. Panama City deals are happening. Rentals and sales. You know, we're still busy, and I know we're not the only agency out there that's busy. I see these other agencies, and they're online, and they're, they're, they're working. We're closing deals with them. So sometimes they bring the buyer. Sometimes we bring the buyer. It just, there's a lot of collaboration that happens in this market. We've got a database of about 3,500 agents and agencies that we actively market to. Hey, Mark Gill and Feliz Viernes in Tucson, Arizona. Mark Gilliland, fantastic realtor, friend of the company, friend of Panama. Um, appreciate you checking in, Mark. Uh, I'm getting ready to check out. But uh, yeah, hopefully that gives everyone a sense of where the market is. It's just getting open and up again. We're one week into it, guys. So really, uh, we're excited about what's to come. We are quite busy in agents, as an agency. Everybody's out showing properties except for me. I'm on Facebook Live today, but uh, I've got a full inbox. I know from the last three hours that I haven't checked emails. People are interested. Big family businesses, family offices in Panama City are starting to look for deals now. We're talking to them about a few buildings for sale, 20 to 30 units, you know, current rents around six to 7% net returns. Uh, those rents have not been, well, they've been, they've seen some pressure too, but uh, let's see how things go over the next couple of weeks. That's what's really going to be the determining factor uh, because the, the market has just kind of been on ice for the last two months. Sellers are not, we're not expecting to sell anything over these last two months. So they don't know if it's a hot or cold market because Regardless of interest, you know, we can't do showings. We've done quite a few virtual showings. We have made a couple of virtual offers um, based on inspections. And in some cases, you know, the buyers knew the buildings already. They're like, okay, it's an O2 model. Cool. I already know that. I know what I want to pay. So uh, anyway, yeah, guys, stay safe. Um, Panama Equity as a company is absolutely staying safe. We've got internal protocols that we've rolled out in terms of face masks, uh, social distance, taking two cars, um, limited people in the property at one time. So we're taking um, the virus very seriously and uh, we're still hard at work, as you can see. So anyway, all signing off from Panama. See you next Friday and I'll check the comments if I didn't catch anything. And I usually reply to comments during the week on this project. Thank you. Gonna, you want to say hi to the Internet? OK, cool. No problem. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.